It is such a pleasure to be with you here today, Dr. Humber. We've had an incredible conversation already about a variety of topics we're going to get into. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Katrin. I'm very excited to be talking to you as well. We are talking about the intersection of two things that people don't really know exists. I'm sure you experience that when you talk about vaginismus and when I talk about swallowing, people are like, huh? What? So <laughs> it's kind of cool to be talking to somebody who's also passionate about it, especially since there's an intersection between the two that people don't know about. Absolutely. And it's such a mystery. Uh, but today we're here to debunk how that happens, how sexual challenges are in fact related to swallowing challenges. Um, and that interconnectedness becomes quite obvious and definitely something to pay attention to. Could yeah. You, and yeah, go ahead. Could you please tell us about you know what comes to mind there and maybe give us an introduction to your work and your expertise in swallowing? Yeah. So my area is swallowing and swallowing disorders, and that is also known as dysphagia. And speech pathologists are the primary um, rehab discipline involved in swallowing disorders. You might go to an ENT or a GI, some physicians who can help with diagnostics, not the, and as well as SLPs. SLP stands for speech language pathologist, um, but speech pathologists are trained in the rehab area. And I have three degrees in speech pathology, undergrad, master's, and PhD, and all of my faculty time at Hopkins, at University of Florida, University of Iowa, have been investigating the physiology of swallowing disorders. So um, that's my connection to swallowing disorders. Um, what's your connection to vaginismus? Thanks for sharing that, first of all, and thank you for the work that you do. That's very impressive. Um, my connection to vaginismus is a personal experience with having this protective body response. That's what I like to refer to it as. Unfortunately, in our medical community, it's often labeled as a sexual dysfunction, which in my opinion um, is not a very empowering approach at helping vulva owners, vagina owners, women overcome it. So I first tried having penetrative sex, in particular PIV, penis and vagina sex, at 18 years old, and I was met with the wall. My vagina would not allow my partner's penis inside. And later, with a lot of confusion and frustration, I did discover this keyword vaginismus. And it turns out a lot more people experience this than unfortunately we can tell um, by online, especially over 10 years ago when I was doing research. I felt incredibly lonely in that experience. Can you tell me a little bit more about this protective body experience? So it makes sense. I think people understand the role of the vagina and the penis and the penis and vagina sex. And uh, I assume the wall was experienced by both of you. Absolutely. Yeah. So what the wall really feels like is that your pelvic floor muscles are involuntarily contracting to the point of not making any entrance available um, for his penis. But also in my experience, I had already had some red flags come up in my life with not being able to wear tampons. Not at all. Some women may experience um, wearing tampons really uncomfortably with excruciating pain being present. And others, just like was the case for me, would try to insert a tampon and throw it right back in the garbage bin over and over again. Um, and of course, it's, it's so frustrating, even creating the thought and the question of, do I have a vaginal opening? And so people experiencing vaginismus may really have either the wall sensation or some penetration might be possible, but it's excruciatingly painful. I'm gonna ask you one more question and then we can talk about how this is connected to swallowing because now I'm totally fascinated by this idea. So you tried a tampon before you ever went for a like gynecological exam. So the tampon was first? That's right, the tampon was first. And then I also attempted to have a pelvic exam after my PIV sex attempt with my partner, wow. we had also attempted fingering um, kind of close to the, the experience of PIV sex and that didn't go well either. I already know it wouldn't because of the tampon, um, but it, during my pelvic exam, or at least the attempt of it, I had the very same protective body response, just be active because of course I was trying to brace in anticipation of the pain that I already knew would be there. So a lot of Vulva owners going into uh, the office trying to have a pelvic exam, a gynecological exam, a pap smear, right? They also might notice some of these symptoms, 
Uh, one of which also is like the lifting of the buttocks off the table or the tightening of the legs or also some shaking of the legs, which is a, a very common experience too, as the body tries to brace for impact. Right. So people are probably wondering what this has to do with swallowing disorders. So can you tell me about your experience with swallowing? Absolutely. So I never made the connection until I also, you know, um, saw the pattern happening in the community that I serve today, vaginismus sisters all over the world trying to overcome this body response. But what I realized is that my challenges with swallowing pills were very much connected to my sexual challenges. And that's exactly what we'll dive into. I know we want to get into that the detail of that in our next little chat together in this next section. Um, and so just giving people the idea that that's what we're about to dive into if uh, they'd like to continue on this journey with us. Yeah. So yeah, let's get into that. 